This news update is brought to you by... So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy. He's here. Welcome to the Bollywood of Today Afternoon Update for Monday, June 1st. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Thanks for joining us. The focus at this hour is on the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, where the post-mortem on the body of Shima Weeks is finally on the way. A Jamaica-based forensic pathologist is conducting today's process, which was halted on May 18, about an hour and a half into the procedure. Our Emmanuel Joseph is on location and has the latest. I can tell you that the forensic pathologist arrived here at the QBH uh, at around 11.20 this morning, and he was uh, driven here by uh, a plainclothes police officer in an unmarked vehicle. He was also met by two other plainclothes officers in another unmarked vehicle. About 10 minutes earlier, the family of uh, Shimar Vick also arrived and went into the mortuary. It is difficult to determine really how long this autopsy will take, but suffice it to say that this should mean closure for the family, and they can now push ahead with arrangements for the funeral of their little loved one. From the QH mortuary of Barbados today, Emmanuel Joseph reporting. Meantime, a St. Peter family of four is homeless following an early morning fire. The family lost all their possessions in the blaze, which occurred around 8 a.m. in Boscobel. Our Devandra Bab is on the scene and has the report. The uninsured three-bedroom timber and wall structure occupied by Peter Devonish, his wife Sandra, and their two sons, Jacob and Zico, was burned to the ground. None of their possessions were saved. None of the occupants were at home at the time of the blaze, this started just after 8 a.m. Sandra, who is asthmatic, was at the bus stop just a short distance away from the house, was rushed to seek medical attention after learning that her house was on fire. She has since been released and tells Barbados today she is feeling better physically, but is still in shock and pondering the next move for her and her family. Devandra Bab reporting for Barbados today. A slight revision to this year's... Hurricane season met officials at the Miami-based National Hurricane Center are now predicting that the Atlantic season, which officially got on the way today, will see eight named storms. Three of those are expected to develop into hurricanes, and one of those will be major. But again, a disaster and the met officials are appealing to the public not to become complacent because of the below par forecast. This would involve obtaining basic emergency supplies, carrying out any necessary repairs to property and listening to forecasts on a regular basis as issued by the Barbados Meteorological Services. Now the main climate factor expected to suppress the hurricane activity this year is the El Nino which is now present and is expected to last through the hurricane season. Many models predict the El Nino to further intensify as the season progresses. The current El Nino is already affecting the wind and rainfall patterns across the equatorial Pacific and is also expected to impact the wind and rainfall patterns in the Atlantic hurricane main development region throughout the hurricane season. That was Deputy of the Barbados Met Service, Sonia Nurse, speaking at the Disaster Emergency Management Press Conference this morning. Don't expect any relief from the 2015-2016 budget, so says opposition politician Indawe, as the finance minister, Chris Sinclair, gets ready to present the financial package in two weeks' time. Speaking to supporters of the St. George South constituency branch last night, Ware made it clear that the June 15 budget will bring more hardships for residents because government failed to engage and take into consideration the challenges facing small businesses. One would have thought that if this present administration understood the reality of keeping businesses in Barbados going, that these are matters 
that they would have addressed as a matter of urgency. But I say to you all that none of this will come on June 15th. What will come instead will be greater and greater burden on the citizens of this country and the businesses of this country. That will happen. And you saw the article in last Sunday's paper where they're removing the duty-free concession on vehicles. Now let us hope that common sense will prevail there. But the government is trying desperately to scrape the ball and raping, raking every, I said rape, and I, that was a fraudulent slip, real friend. <laughs> raking every cent that they can get. So they're asking you to carry their economic costs and they're hitting you everywhere. Meantime, as custom guards and officers strategize the way forward with their bargaining agent, the National Union of Public Workers, on the transfer to the Barbados Revenue Authority at Union headquarters today, an opposition senator is giving them his full backing on the decision not to make the move and stage a work to rule in protest. I am firmly in support of the action now being taken by the unions and being taken by the people in customs. I am 100% in support of them. Yes, the actions that they are taking are inconvenient for some of us. Yes, the go slow at the port is inconveniencing merchants. But sometimes you have to inconvenience people for them to understand your point. All of us in Barbados are taking what the government is doing. And we only understand the point when it comes home to us, when we are made to feel it. There's regional and international news after this short break. Secure your future, be financially strong. On the regional scene, disaster officials in Guyana are urging residents to take the necessary precautions as heavy rains continue to batter the country. The government ordered some 43 schools to be closed today as residents battle floodwaters. And the downpours are not expected to subside anytime soon as Met officials predict some 72 more hours of bad weather. And finally, Iraqi officials are reporting that at least 34 of the country's police died earlier today and some 48 more were injured in an ISIS attack. More in this CNN report. To the north of where I'm standing here in Baghdad, very much the volatile front lines between ISIS and pro-government areas. And it just shows you the kind of firepower that ISIS have at their disposal. They can cause this much devastation, but still really not quite even get inside the base they were targeting. But at this stage, Carol, people are still asking a key question. We've learned some staggering new information today about how was it that ISIS were able to get into the main town that Iraqi forces want to fight back and recover now, Ramadi. The Speaker of Parliament, now he's the most senior Sunni politician in Iraq, remember Iraq divided between Sunni and Shia, he has told us that he believes that military or political officials, not clear who exactly, gave an order for the elite special forces who are defending Ramadi, their US trained, the best of the best really here in Iraq, to pull out. And that was let what let ISIS move in and take the city. And on that note, we come toward the end of our afternoon update, but we'll be back again this evening. Until then, log on to www.barbidestoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. We're also on Channel 101 on Line TV and Mix 96.9 FM. 
There you can get all the latest news and sports. I'm um, Fernella Wedderburn to have a wonderful day. This news update is brought to you by... So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy.